All right, guys. So we're going to talk about what is personality today, but let me let me get this all sorted out real quick. If I can. Hang on. Come on. This little doohickey doesn't want to move. Okay, perfect. <clears throat> so yesterday we talked a little bit about personality. We talked about uh, personality traits, positive, negative, neutral ones. You guys did some work on your personality identity chart. Maybe you started a Nearpod. If you didn't finish those, you'll, you'll work on those today after these notes. But what I want you to know is that as we go through this, you do need to write this stuff down because you'll probably get a quiz on personality at some point. So write these notes down as we go through it. Pause the video as you need, and it'll help you out. Okay. So what is personality? It's the combination of characteristics, emotions, behaviors that make each individual unique, which is why I said yesterday that these things we wrote down had to be characteristics, almost like adjectives of you. You couldn't say things like um, you were an athlete. You had to say you were, an ath you were athletic, right? Uh, and personality traits shape how we think, feel, and act in various situations based on who we are as people is going to make us react when we have situations presented to us, okay? So why is personality important? It's understanding our personality helps us with building healthy relationships, helps us with self-awareness, helps us with personal growth, right? It just overall makes us a better version of ourselves if we understand our personality, okay? Knowing our personality traits can help us make better life decisions, right? Knowing that maybe you're short-tempered might help you realize when you're, when you're getting angry, you might say something. Knowing that you're compassionate might help you realize that you have an interest in something that wouldn't be there, right? A career. So... Understanding our personality is super important. Also, knowing your personality can improve communication and empathy, right? So you're able to communicate better because you know what you need to fill your cup. You know what you're able to give other people, um, and it will help you feel, have that empathetic feeling towards other people, okay? Also, it helps you realize that people with different traits may communicate differently, and it's going to help you be able to adapt to various communication styles, right? There are definitely going to be people in your life that, uh, maybe your bosses and stuff in your future. Maybe it's your parents. Maybe it's uh, other people in your family that their communication style just doesn't jive with you, right? But you have to learn. It's not okay to just break them, you know, push them away or anything. You have to learn how to adapt to that and be successful in that. And that's why knowing your personality can help you, okay? So we're going to look at the big five personality traits. And the reason why um, this thing is being, this little kid's being bowled over by the ocean is because the five words make up the word ocean. So O is openness. Let's see if I can make my picture just a touch smaller. There we go. Okay. C is conscientiousness, and we'll get all these in a second. E is extroversion. A is agreeableness. And N is neuroticism. Now, those are very fancy words. We'll break those down in the next slide, so make sure you write down each thing, right? So openness means your imagination, your imaginative, you're curious about new things, right? So you have this understanding that a person with high openness, they're going to enjoy figuring out new hobbies. Hobbies. They're going to have um, enjoy different cultures, traveling, different art forms, music, everything, um, and they may be trying, maybe open to trying unconventional approaches to solving problems, right? They're those your think outside the box people, okay? Open individuals may make decisions based on their curiosity and desire for novelty or uniqueness or interesting. And they may be, like what I said earlier, more considerate uh, or more open to considering unconventional, unconventional and creative solutions. Okay. So the conscientiousness one, you, that's organized. You're responsible, right? You can see he's kind of moving stuff around on his desk, keeping it neat and organized, right? For behavior, this type of person keeps a tidy workspace. They plan ahead. They complete tasks promptly. They hit deadlines, right? They may also be reliable and can follow through on commitments, okay? For their decision-making things, um, they're very thorough in their decision-making process, and they consider the consequences. They weigh the pros and cons before making choices. Um, and they may prefer, uh, you know, structured and systematic approaches to problem solving. So like, hey, I tried this, this didn't work, I didn't do this, 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 and they just kind of go through that process. They like that structure, okay? So the next one is that extroversion. So really extrovert versus introvert. Are you outgoing, enjoying social interactions? A lot of people, do you need to recharge, right? Whatever kind of gets you going. So 
these type of people, an introverted person is going to enjoy spending time alone or with like a very small group of friends that might listen more than speaking in social situations and they prefer quieter environments, right? Introverted individuals tend to make decisions based on their internal thoughts and feelings and they may carefully analyze situations, prefer time to think before they respond. And they're going to thrive in roles that require a lot of focus and individual work. And this is a scale, right? So if you said like, here's the least introverted all the way up to the most extroverted, they're going to be somewhere in here, right? Somewhere in that scale. Next one is agreeableness. These are going to be friendly and cooperative people, okay? An agreeable person tends to be empathetic because they can kind of feel the feelings the other people are having. Uh, they're going to be supportive of other people. They want to prioritize harmony. They don't want things to get out of balance. Nobody wants, they, want, they don't want fighting or conflict. For the decision-making process, they're going to prioritize the needs and feelings of other people, right? They might be more inclined to compromise and find a win-win situation so there's not this huge uh, conflict coming up, okay? And then our last one, neuroticism. These are, um, they might be emotionally sensitive or prone to anxiety, right? Um, and so things, people might have a, uh, they might be react to certain stressors or have a strong emotional reaction to certain things. It's possible you might have mood swings, right? You could also have forms of anxiety. Um, and these types of people are going to be more cautious and they're not going to be as risky. Doesn't mean they're not going to get things done. They're going to have still strong decision making skills, but they're going to be a little more risk averse. They're also going to make sure they're going to check with their boss to make sure it's on the right track, right? They're seeking to make sure, hey, yeah, that looks good. Keep working through it. Okay. So that's ocean. All right. So for these next slides, I'm going to give you a real life scenario. I want you to pause the video here after I read it. And I want you to tell me how each person in this video or in these real life scenarios are going to respond based on their personality. Okay. So you may have to open up the slides and go through them with you. All right. But you'll just, after you wrote all the notes down, you're going to write these real life scenarios. So first one, in a middle school class, students are assigned a group project. Sarah, an extroverted student, takes charge of the group and immediately starts assigning tasks to everyone. She actively engages with her group members, brainstorming ideas, and encouraging open discussions. On the other hand, Alex, an introverted student, is quieter during the initial group meetings. However, Alex spends time working independently and thoroughly researching the project. Pause the video here and in your notebook, answer how Sarah and Alex are gonna to respond to this real life scenario. All right, real life scenario number two. In a school club, a disagreement arises between two members, Emily and James. Emily is highly agreeable and dislikes conflict, while James is more neurotic and easily gets anxious in tense, tense situations. The disagreement centers on how the club should organize an upcoming event. Emily is willing to compromise and find common ground, while James becomes increasingly stressed and defensive. What is going to happen for each person? Right? Pause the video in your notebook. Write down what happens for James and Emily. The next one, a group of students is planning a class trip. Emma, a highly conscientious student, carefully researches different destinations, considers logistics, and creates a detailed itinerary. She is focused on ensuring everything runs smoothly. On the other hand, Max, a student in high in openness to experience, suggests a less conventional location that involves exploring nature and unique cultural experiences, but with fewer logistical details available. All right. So what is going to happen for Emma and Max? Pause the video and answer the questions. Once you have done all of that, your notes are done and you may move on to um, the next activity 